Hello, I'm Kristen and welcome to my channel. I'm healing my body and mind through nutrition and exercise. Welcome back if you've been following along and welcome if you are new. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button, like and follow along. Um, I love to hear where you are on your journey. If you're just starting on carnivore, have you dabbled into a more animal based? Where are you on your journey and what have you healed? Leave that in the comments below. So today I want to talk about something because it's a question that I've been asked. It's something that I constantly see, especially on social media. So if you're looking into starting the carnivore diet, my number one tip to you is remove the noise, remove the background noise because it's coming. You're going to at one way, at one point during your journey, you're going to get the feedback that you don't want to hear, or you're going to get the feedback that you don't agree with, right? And that is part of life. Everybody is not going to agree with your decisions, whether the decision is putting shiplap on your wall and somebody not liking it, right? There's going to have, dif you're going to have different opinions, whether it's painting your door black. Some people don't like that. The day I painted that door black, I absolutely loved it. Well, Krista, what does this have to do with carnivore? Those are just my little, <laughs> my little analogies. Um, but my point is people are not going to always agree with you. And just like the opinion on decor, there's going to be opinions on nutrition. Yes, totally different things. I understand decor does not have scientific uh, science and studies behind it, right? Um, whereas nutrition does. However, if you start looking back on the different studies, a lot of them are not conclusive. A lot of them uh, don't really specifically detail just one thing to prove their case. And with science and like with anything in life, things change. Things are going to change. You're going to find new evidence or you're going to see maybe what they said over here is not true because it's not really working. Sorry, I heard like a, like the door. <laughs> um, where was I? So the point is, is that you're just going to always get feedback. You're going to get the people that don't understand why you are going carnivore. You're going to get the people that say that you're going to die. You're going to get the people that say, show me the evidence, <laughs> like show me the money, like Jerry Maguire, right? Show me the evidence, um, show me the studies. And there are plenty of studies out there contradicting what we are saying in the carnivore world. And I'll tell you my opinion on that is that I truly, truly do believe that if you look at pharmaceutical companies and the food industry, I really do think that they are trying to make you sick. I mean, if you're, if all the people in the world, all these people who are obese, all these people who have diabetes, all these people who have inflammation and thyroid issues and just so on and so on, if they don't have these things, the pharmaceutical companies and the doctors are not going to make as much money. And so I really do believe that there are food addictions, there are sugar addictions, and it's a thing. I have experienced it in the one time, even though I'm not, I don't find or consider myself a person who is or was addicted to sugar. When I had just the smallest piece of cake in June for my kids' birthdays, I found myself wanting more. And I don't know if it's because I hadn't had cake in so many months or if it's because it really is that addiction to the sugar, to those sweetnesses, right? And it goes the same with carbs. I would have pasta at least once a week. I love pasta. Um, and I wasn't really a bread person, but there's people who are addicted to just having those kind of carbs. And so you have to look, people who are obese have a food addiction. If you listen to a lot of people who are going up and down on their weight a lot, a lot of them will admit that they have a food addiction. They'll tell you that they stress eat. They don't know how to stop. They pick the wrong foods and they know that they're doing it, 
but they can't seem to stop. And so we have to start reframing and retraining our mindsets because it starts here. And I see it all the time. I'm a wellness coach with a company and we have home workouts and they also have nutrition. And I will see my girls tell me all the time, what can I do to lose more weight because I'm stuck? And can I do more cardio? Can I do more weights? You can't outrun nutrition. And I tell them this all the time. And I repeat myself over and over because it just doesn't seem to sink in. You need to work on your nutrition. Whether you're here for carnivore or not, reducing oxalates that can be harmful for your body, reducing the sugars, reducing the carbohydrates, this alone will help you. It might not help or cure you completely if you're still eating these things, but it's a start, right? Which is how they kind of probably came about the low carb diet. And I was against a lot of this for a long time. I did do keto. I did low carb more so to be healthier, but it wasn't until I went carnivore that I started to see the change. And it wasn't overnight. People who start carnivore, please stop whining that after two weeks, you're still not feeling good or you have no energy. Stop whining that after two weeks, you haven't lost weight. Carnivore diet is not a weight loss way of eating. It's not a weight loss diet. The carnivore way of eating is about your health. Let that sink in, please. If you're listening to this, it is about your health. Now, if you lose weight on this journey because you needed to lose weight, your body will do so. And it's a bonus, right? And if you are on a journey where you needed to gain some weight, you also will gain some weight. Your body knows what it needs. And so we're faced with challenges along the way on this journey, right? And this is one of the questions. It's, have you faced any challenges or pushbacks from friends, family, medical professionals regarding your choice to follow a carnivore diet? Now think about this question and leave your answer in the comments. I wanna know if you have faced any challenges. For me, personally, I work from home. So I have no colleagues <laughs> and I have not gone to the doctor. I know that's probably some of you will criticize me for that, but for so many years of being sick, and going through depression and having thyroid issues and gut issues and all that and having gone to the doctors and feeling like they just brush you off and feeling like they just want to put you on medication and feeling like it just doesn't work i haven't gone to the doctor now i know that i need to go and i want to go because i want to do new blood work since i've been on carnivore and i want to see where i'm at and so that i can share that with you but i've been procrastinating so that's another story and another day. Now, have I had pushback from family or friends? I've had a couple friends question, question me as to how am I getting enough fiber if I'm not eating um, vegetables or enough vitamins without the fruit and all that. So I've had those questions and I explained that we get plenty of, we don't need as much fiber when you're not consuming all those carbohydrates. Um, and that I get plenty of vitamins through the meat that I'm eating. And I feel amazing. I feel great. I haven't felt like I'm missing anything out of the ordinary. Of course, I need to run blood work, see if I am deficient in any of the vitamins just to see. But that's pretty much the biggest question I get asked. I think that I've been very open and raw and honest with why I started this journey. And I think that's why I don't get that much pushback because I have a very small circle of family and friends. Um, and I think that a lot of them do understand why I'm doing this or they haven't come out straight out to tell me that they think I'm crazy because they feel like it's none of their business, which really it's not. And so 
I've seen where people will tell me that their family members are sending them information and that it's going to kill them and that it's bad for them. And what can they do? Well, there's two things. You can send them information on the different doctors that have talked about this. And I'll link those doctors that I always reference in the description below. You can look up some studies that will, you know, kind of talk about how what we are doing is it's hard hard to explain because there's not that many studies on carnivore itself. I know that Dr. Sean Baker is working with some other doctors on funding and trying to get studies done. And I think that's absolutely amazing. And I think that we need those studies to really show and prove to people that this works. So it is a little bit challenging for us, right? Because there are some studies out there that will tell you that the seed oils are bad. And then there's a contradictory that they'll try to tell you that Harvard came out with with debunking that but so you're always going to have the back and forth you cannot convince somebody who is so close-minded about something that you're doing for your health because they're just not going to believe it they're not going to trust it they're not going to be open-minded enough to listen to these other doctors and so you also have to remind yourself that we can't always change people's minds we can't, you can take a horse to the water, right? But you can't make them drink. There's that saying, and it's so true. I myself have given people information about the carnivore diet. I myself have sent videos of what can help them for their certain uh, situation. And yet I cannot force anybody to try the carnivore diet they have to want it. They have to want it so bad inside of them. They want, they have to want to stop feeling like shit to want to try it. And those who are relatively healthy are definitely not going to probably look at the carnivore diet because they feel that they're okay with eating a balanced diet. And that's fine to each their own. And I understand I've gotten a comment before in the past. Well, if it's a family or if it's a friend, I feel like I have the right to tell them yes and no. Okay, and let me explain my opinion on this. So if it's a family member, like my mom, I have told her that I think it would be amazing for her to do a carnivore diet. And I've given her information on oxalates and I've told her about the low inflammation because she gets inflamed. And I've explained things to her. Now, remember, especially if we're talking about older people, they have been eating this way for what? 50, 60, 70 years. And sometimes it's hard to change their mind unless they're living with a really, really bad illness. I get a lot of comments on my YouTube page of people who are in their 60s and 70s. And I love to hear how amazing they are doing on this diet. And also, I love the fact that they actually made that change because I feel like it's it's so hard to change somebody's mind when they're, they're older. And so we're going to all have these different opinions and that's okay. That's why there's healthy debates. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to debate things and they just think that they are right and you see it all over social media. So for me, the pushback probably has been the most on social media because you are going to get people commenting on your page when you are very open and expressive like I am. I talk about how meat has started to heal me, my depression and all the things that I go through. Um, and I am starting to slowly just let people know that we've been ingrained about vegetables and fruits and not those things might be harming you. And so recently in my wellness business, I love the workouts, but I don't believe in their nutrition anymore. And they're coming out with a new one on like just prying on women with fixing their hormones because there's so many of us that have hormonal issues out there and it sounds really great but when I really looked into a, and I didn't even do an extensive research yet so this is just a little bit of research that I've done but the doctor who is helping with this program is a pharmacist and I have nothing against pharmacists because one of my good friends is a pharmacist and I love her and I think she's amazing. And, but you're taught that medicine is the key. Supplements are keys and it, it, it's in the textbooks. 
And I don't blame these people. It's what they're taught. But at one point, you have to open your eyes and start seeing that maybe this isn't everything. It is sometimes. Some people will need medication and it's very helpful. And there's other times where I see so many testimonies of people getting on carnivore and getting off medication. And so with this particular situation that I'm talking about of going, doing this nutrition program and this workout, and it's for your hormones, I just get a little bit curious as to the motives of this pharmacist and they're selling supplements. So it's a business that is part of a business. And I totally get that because if I had a business and I had my own supplements, I'm going to sell you my supplements and that's fine. Some people will need supplements. I understand that as well, because sometimes our bodies don't absorb the vitamins and the nutrients and the minerals that we need on our own. But I also think that a lot of times your body can, and you don't need these supplements. So sometimes supplements can do more harm than good because you might be over consuming a certain vitamin or something in your body that you don't need more of. So I just kind of am like a little, and I want to tell some of my friends that I think are going to start this program. And I started to type it out in one of the chats and try to be like, because I saw that this doctor believes in eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. So, you know, that, that threw me back. It was like, Oh God. Okay. We're going back to the lots of veggies, which is one of the other gut programs that I did, which was lots of veggies and less meat. And I don't know if this program's going to be like that or not, or if they're implementing more protein or not, but it's still probably a lot of vegetables and fruits because he literally believes in that. And so I'm like scratching my skin over here and just kind of, should I tell them? Like, should I say something? Because then at the same time, I feel like I can, right? I'm their friend. I'm their coach. I'm, I want to let them know and understand what oxalates are and how it can, veggies can be more harmful. And I've been kind of like sprinkling in a little bit of that. And then they'll post pictures of like all these veggies and I'm like, oh my God, nobody's listening to me. But I got to remember that this is my journey, not theirs. And they have to find that journey on their own. And, 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 and I could post about it on my Instagram, right? That's for everybody to see and you can read it or not read it and take it in or not take it in. But if I personally go to tell you, is it my job? Is it my right? I can say something. You can also choose not to listen, right? That's how it works. And then sometimes I think, well, maybe I just shouldn't say anything because I've sprinkled it in. I've talked about it. I talk about it on my Instagram and on my podcast. And that should be enough. I don't know. I'm talking out loud here to you. So let me know what you think. (laughs) But I personally, so I have not faced that much pushback other than social media. My family knows this is how I eat. They've seen the change. They've seen the Kristen who was pretending to be happy and the Kristen who's actually happy. They've seen, my mom says that even my skin looks clearer. I haven't really noticed it a hundred percent. I've never really had a lot of skin issues other than when I was a teenager. Um, And so, but she says that she sees my skin clearer and she can just see my demeanor and how I am than how I was before starting carnivore. So I think that that's a plus having somebody close to you be able to really see the change and really start to understand, well, you know, even though I grew up thinking that vegetables is what you need and fruit and all these things. Um, and as a Hispanic, a lot of times we'll be like, um, like it's just a little bit, um, it's one day to have a piece of bread right? Where we grow up like that. Oh, eh, McDonald's. Eso no todo el día. That's not every day McDonald's. You know, we don't eat McDonald's every day. Um, Ay, dale el niño helado. ¿Por qué no, no quiere darle helado? You know, like things like that. Um, why don't we give them ice cream? Just come on. It's just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit becomes a lot. And a lot becomes a sick person. <laughs> 
proof, proof, sick person. I, I, I grew up on Chef Boardee, okay? <laughs> Don't judge me. Don't judge my parents. They worked. They, this is what that generation knew. It was TV dinners and French toast sticks and bagels and the desserts that were like, uh, it was like an oatmeal cookie with like this marshmallow thing inside. They were delicious. Uh, cookie crisp, uh, lots of cereals, um, seed oils, right? All around, like who knew? Um, we cooked in canola oil when we did fry. Like, I mean, it was bad. Like looking back, it was bad. And we may not have known better then, but we know better now. So I do think that it's okay to spread information send people videos of 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 the experts i am by no means an expert i am not a doctor or a scientist or a nutritionist or like any of that but i'm sharing my journey i'm sharing my personal opinion that's what this is that is it take it or leave it like it's not ingrained um it's not written in stone like at all so i just do think that it's important to share what I've been through. I think it's important to see, my gosh, you know, as a mom of three, or if you're, or, or you're just a brand new mom and you're suffering through postpartum, that it's not normal and that you don't need to live that way. And if you have thyroid issues or gut issues, like there is other ways to try to heal your body with nutrition when the doctors don't tell you that because they're not educated on that. And nutritionists are educated with a textbook of this is how it has to be done. And it's hard to open the minds. So when I find a doctor, like the ones that I was telling you, description below, um, and other nutritionists and dietitians on Instagram, I love, or here on YouTube, like if you're watching, please, like say hello and let me know. And I would love to follow you because that amazes me. When your eyes finally open, whether you're a doctor or a nutritionist or a dietitian and truly see that the carnivore way of eating is healing. And I'm not super strict carnivore. I'm not like you could only eat red meat and salt and water and eggs. Like I think that some people do okay eating some fruits, not all fruit. I think it's okay to eat uh, a fermented sourdough bread every once in a while. Some people do that when they're on an animal based diet. So if it works for you, because everybody is different, I will say it over and over again here on my channel, everybody is different. There's no linear diet. What works for me may not work for you, vice versa. And so we're all just trying our best on this journey of life. We're all just trying to be healthy. We all want to live this long life, right? But I also think that you need to live a sustainable life where it's something that you can do, where you are happy doing it. Because if we're just going to eat like a lion diet and be miserable eating that way, then you're still just not happy, right? But I think that when you realize eating a certain way heals you, that alone is enough. That alone changes your mind to realizing that food isn't always just about pleasure, but about healing your body and fueling your body. <laughs> your, bleh, your body. And so for me, I do want to enjoy food. I do love food. I love cooking. I'm Hispanic. I, I love the spices. But... I'm also okay with how I've been eating. And I've also noticed I'm okay with a little bit of garlic and onion powder every once in a while. It's not all the time. Um, and a little bit of paprika I've had. Um, I haven't had dabbled too much into any other seasonings other than when we uh, smoke meat. Um, or if I've gone to a barbecue place, usually their seasonings are probably not 100% the best. But I've done okay with them because it's not an everyday thing. So you have to find what works for you, block out the noise, block out the haters. And when it's about you and your health, remember that that's all that it's about and no one else. So let's block out the noise together 
And I hope that you have a beautiful day. This video has gone way longer than my normal videos. So I hope that you give it a like, share it, and I will see you again tomorrow.